The pro-life movement is stepping up to help and empower women. That's coming up on this edition of Pro-Life Gen News. Hey everyone, I'm Kelly, and this is Pro-Life Gen News. Earlier this year, Twitter user and author Tuttle Singer posed a question on Twitter asking people what they personally have done to support lower income single mothers. Now this is the type of question we hear and continue to hear often in the pro-life movement. These questions are typically asked to set pro-lifers up for a gotcha moment, but turns out when we say we're pro-life, we mean we're pro-life. The responses, all 14,000 plus, were incredible. Some of our favorites include... I donate supplies that my church collects on a regular basis. I also buy school supplies for kids in low-income school districts. Another user said, I've gone to Biloxi, Mississippi to help rebuild houses for single mothers. I've worked in public health, primarily with pregnant and postpartum women. I've also worked for a women's shelter and helped many women escape abusive relationships. Someone else chimed in with, I adopted a child because his birth mother decided that she was unable to parent him. Someone else volunteered at a center assisting with the wellness of mothers, babysat, donated to adoptions, drove moms to appointments, was a friend, which is huge. They listened and talked and met up and called these moms that were struggling and needing help. Someone else had a single mother friend who she took into her home and helped get her daughter into a decent school. They introduced her into a caring Christian community and then helped them get on their feet. They helped them furnish their new home and stock the kitchen and find dignified work. Someone else donated a car. And the tweets go on, not to mention the hundreds of stories about fostering and adoptions in which conservative pro-lifers make up the majority. You see, conservatives have a long history of defending the preborn mothers, fathers, and struggling families with policies designed to empower them. It's an abortion mentality that throws in the towel saying that there's no hope, so just get rid of the child. It's pro-family conservatives who care enough to equip people with what they need to prosper. Besides what individuals are doing, like the ones that chimed in on this tweet, we're also doing what we can to change public policy so that we're also supporting women and babies in the best way we can. Often it's pro-life politicians who are creating policies that support families, including expanding access to high quality education through school choice or for increased deductions for childcare or the per child tax credit. And the cost of living is often the lowest in states led by pro-lifers, which help families bottom line. In a world after Roe, government at the state and local levels will need to be even more deliberate in helping young families, mothers and fathers, succeed in building a life for themselves and the next generation. It's going to take some creativity and determination, but the value to all of us will be found in the children raised up to lead this great generation. We've heard before from Students for Life President Kristen Hawkins, the goal of pro-lifers is not to make abortion illegal. It's to make it unthinkable. And by taking care of one another, creating a culture of life on school campuses and workplaces in our communities, we'll be able to do that. We want to transform society into one that supports and loves moms and babies and that helps families thrive. Are you going to join us? That's all for today's Pro-Life Gen News. For more on these stories and the latest in the pro-life movement, head over to studentsforlife.org and continue to follow us here on Facebook. And don't forget to like and share the content you're seeing here to help us spread the message of hope and life in America. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kelly, and I'll see you next time.